Welcome back to the updated budget guide for custom keyboards. This budget guide is based off keyboards that I have actually used or reviewed. I won't be naming any boards that I personally haven't tried, even though you guys might have tried it or have it, but if I have not tried it or reviewed it, I will not be recommending it because I haven't tried it, right? So I'll be going through three different tiers for this budget keyboard guide, similar to the previous one. We have low tier, mid tier, and high tier. So to start off with low tier keyboards, low tier keyboards are typically made in China and usually found on websites like AliExpress and Taobao. So for the viewers in the US, it might be a little inaccessible for you, but for the people who live in the Southeast Asia, these keyboards will be really accessible. So let us begin with the first low tier recommendation. It will be the GMK series. The GMK series is a staple to the budget boards. They were the first few who came up with a really budget price, but had a gasket mounted board with all the basic specs that we would want to see. Triple mode connection which includes Bluetooth, wired and wireless 2.4 gigahertz. We have foam for customization. Fully hot swappable which means no soldering whatsoever. Typically GMK boards are gasket mounted with a polycarbonate plate which allows the builder to create a talky sound really easily. And not only that, they recently have added a customizable screen where you can add your custom GIFs, add whatever you want to add to see on your keyboard. It is one of my all-time favorite budget keyboards and it is one of my favorite recommendations to anyone who is looking for their first budget keyboard. Once in a while, I would get a text from a friend that would say, hey, I'm trying to get a custom keyboard for myself, what will you recommend? And my usual first response to that is what size of a keyboard are you looking for? And once they let me know what size, I'll link them to a GMK which is related to that size. It's really easy to build in because the moment you get it, once it arrives, you can just start building in it without doing anything. Which is what I believe most people would enjoy when building their first custom keyboard. And not only that, they provide a lot of different layouts aside from the 65% which is what a lot of beginners would need because not everyone wants to go for 65%, usually they would go for a TKL or something bigger in size. And all of these things that I mentioned at an insanely cheap price. So GMK series is one of the staple when it comes to budget keyboards. Next up is the Sugar 65. This is for those who prefer a little bit more quality over function. It is a fully CNC aluminum board with wired connection only. Based on my own preference and the general trend, once you get a little deeper into custom keyboards, you would actually prefer having a wired connection over a wireless connection and you would prioritize the build quality of the keyboard over a screen per se. So Sugar 65, a 65% hot swappable fully CNC aluminum keyboard. With a quality base engraving at the back, foam for customization. If you want to experience something different coming from the plastic boards, then Sugar 65 would be a recommendation I would give to you. Gasket mounted with an FR4 plate, it's really easy to build in. It sounds really good, you can really hit the deeper side of the sound spectrum with the full CNC base. And it's available in a ton of very special colors, aside from the usual black and white. Last but not least, it's the High 75. It's a personal thing. I really love how this keyboard sounds, which is why I put it into this recommendation. It is also fully made from aluminum, 75% with a knob. The general sound signature is really poppy, which is what I really love about the keyboard. Similarly, it is really easy to build in. Fully hot swappable, has one of the best pre-loop stabilizers. Gasket mounted with a polycarbonate plate, wired connection only and it does have some pretty cute engravings. So that would be my three recommendations for the low tier keyboards. If you're interested in getting into custom keyboards and you don't really want to commit everything you have into it, I would recommend getting the GMK series because you have all the functions that you probably had before you came into custom keyboards. But if you know you want to go all in, 100% in, then you could go for the Sugar 65, which is 65% aluminum, wired connection only. But let's say you're in between those two, I would recommend go high 75 because you get 75%, you can experience a knob, you can build with it really easily and honestly, it is it sounds amazing. Moving on to mid-tier boards. These are boards you would find for more reputable brands. It's not some random China company. It's definitely more accessible to everyone and the build quality of the keyboard in general is definitely a notch higher compared to the low-tier boards. Generally, keyboards nowadays don't really fall under this range anymore, the $80 to $100 range, or at least not that I have tried. Typically, they usually go for like a below $50 or otherwise they will go for a $150 one. They wouldn't... I 
I, I'm not really familiar with like a hundred dollar keyboard. But for the first recommendation of the mid tier, it's going to be the Mons Geek M series. This series consists of all possible layouts. I'm talking every single possible layout that you can think of it's available. From 60% to full-size keyboards, they have it all available in stock on the Mons Geek website. If you somehow haven't heard of Mons Geek, Mons Geek is basically like a sub-company from Echo, so they know they are what they're doing. All these boards have the basic specs that you would want, hot swappable foam for customization, gasket mounted with a polycarbonate plate. You can add on different materials of plates for $10 each, so let's say you want to add an FR4 plate, that'll be extra 10 bucks. You want to add a steel plate or aluminum plate, extra $10. It comes with screwing stabilizers, which, which is something we don't really use in the low tier bots. And the most important thing, it is compatible with QMK and VIA. Basically, key bindings. You can basically change your key binds on the keyboard. Most importantly, it is how accessible it is. And honestly, Mons Geek M series, one of the most accessible keyboards on the market. Next up is the KBD Fence Tofu 2.0 with different layer options with Win Keyless, Win Key, HHKB, nearly 20 different color options. It'll fit any setup or any colorway or any theme you are trying to work with. It offers three different mounting styles. We have top mount, gasket mount, and silicon bow mount. This board is basically one of those boards that you could spend countless hours configuring it into your exact setup that you want or the exact sound signature you want the exact feel that you want you can spend a lot of time on this board because of the different options and customization available in the board itself it is a little pricier compared to the mons geek m series but i would say the build quality from this is so it is better than the mons geek for sure and honestly i don't think i can think of a third one because keychron is like I'm pretty sure everyone knows Keychron and I don't want to talk about Keychron when everyone knows about it. So we're going to move on to the high tier keyboards. In this tier, we talk about the best quality you can get for a budget keyboard. It will have all the specs that you would ever need when it comes to custom keyboards and it tends to be towards the pre-order side of things and not the in-stock side of things. So this is something that you would watch out for in case they come back on pre-order and very rarely you might see them in stock. So this recommendation is a little special because I would say this one is targeted towards gamers. This is the Echo Mod 007 HE. For the gamers who want to have a custom keyboard and you want your keyboard to actually elevate your gaming experience, then I would recommend trying out the Echo Mod 007 HE. So what is this keyboard that changes your gaming experience? So this is called the Echo Mod 007 HE and HE stands for Hall Effect. This keyboard comes with Hall Effect switches, which means you will have access to rapid trigger and dynamic keystrokes. I have a video on it if you're interested in it a little more in depth. It's a pretty long explanation. You should go check it out. But if you prioritize your gaming experience over how your keyboard sounds and how your keyboard feels, and you just want your keyboard to make you play a little bit better if you had if you have hit your skill ceiling, then you should check this how effect switches out. Number two, if it was forever in stock, it would be the best budget keyboard I would recommend from the high tier forever, but it is usually not. The Zoom series by Wuche Studio. It is one of the best in terms of quality of manufacturing of the boards, in my opinion. It is one. Of, it has one of the best quality CNC manufacturing. It is available in all the different layouts, which means from 65% all the way to full-size keyboards, they have it all in a design. It is a really popular board with tons of customizations, not only for its aesthetics, but in terms of how you can build it. In the different layouts, we have different features that they have added in. So for the 65%, we have a knob. The 75%, we had a screen. And full-size keyboards, we have screen and knob and everything. So basically, every single layout boasts a different feature. And these can be actually interchanged with badges, if you're not really interested in screen, you can go for an extra key instead. So all these little things, that the attention to detail was what Wuche Studio really shines through. And the most important part, it always sounds good no matter how you build it. Like, the base is so heavy and so well done with the gasket mount. It just sounds good. Like, no matter what, it just sounds good. And if you don't want to build it, it actually can come pre-assembled. So this is the Zoom series by Wuche Studio. 
Last but not least, the last recommendation from the high tier will be the TKD Cycle 7. If I'm not wrong, the TKL was released recently. The one I'm talking about is basically the Cycle series from TKD. Unfortunately, I couldn't get my hands on the TKL, but my experience with the TKD Cycle 7, which was the FR TKL, amazing experience. It is one of like my favorite keyboards of 2023. And that is mainly because of the ball catch structure. As a person who has built let's say over 50 keyboards, right? Having this ball catch structure is amazing. It's a life changer. Like you wouldn't expect something so simple. The action of unscrewing a board from the back just changed over to un... Like you just have to pull out the top frame and it's done. And it's... It's amazing, it's, one, it's, it's so good, it's so good. To keep things simple, TKD basically made keyboard building extremely simple. They refined the process of building a keyboard. No screws. It's basically a hot swappable top frame and it sounds absolutely amazing. It has all the foam you want for customization. It comes with all the accessories you would need to build in that keyboard. And the manufacturing on this keyboard is absolutely just clean. It's so clean. and. All, they have a bunch of different colors for aesthetic to match your setup and whatnot. And being able to hot swap your top frame to change out your switches, change out your keycaps, change out the foam for customization, that's what makes the board so good. I know I said this was the last one, but this will be the final one, and this is me shilling my own keyboard. Killer65, $149. For those who are new to the channel, Killer65 is actually a bot I have created by myself. Uh, I started a company called Airy Studio with a fellow friend of mine, and we have started creating custom keyboards of our own. And our first ever keyboard that we released was the Killer65. If you understand the process and the decisions we made during this entire creating of a custom keyboard, check out the video linked up below. But I currently have a few in stock that we have made extras because sometimes there might be QC issues. So we basically have a few extras in perfect condition. They have been pre-configured to popular orders that we received. So mainly what you'll be seeing is like brass top frame, black base and like a PVD weight. So a quick rundown of the board. It has all the specs you would want. You have the self-facing, the screw-in stabilizers, and it is a fully CNC aluminum board with its gasket mounted with a polycarbonate plate. And the special feature about it is that it has customizable top frames that you would actually need to add on. But the customizable top frames is more about creating a different look with different top frames with every different color. I do have my next keyboard launching soon, the Haru 80. This time around, we did a TKL, which is what I will be using for my daily driver. And this time around, we didn't focus on the front of the keyboard, but focus on the back of the keyboard. We have something special, I would say, at the back of the keyboard. So for those of you who are interested in TKL, stay tuned. We will be launching it really soon. I will be providing updates and I'll probably do a video on it, send out a few bots to reviewers out there. Okay, that will mark the end of the budget guide, but comment down below what keyboards you are really passionate about that I have missed out on that are, I would say, part of the budget series. This is probably the first video I did after hitting 100k. Thank you so much for the 100,000 subscribers. I will be doing a separate video of it soon well, I, when I get my plaque and everything. So aside from that, subscribe if you enjoy keyboard content, like the video if you like french fries. And aside from that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.